Well, th this is uh, the latter part of April or early May, near, near the end of the war. Then we're traipsing along the, med the countryside of uh, Dachau. Then all of a sudden, we came across hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of so-called prisoners in the black and white prison garb, shaven heads, sunken eyes, hollow cheeks, bare skeleton, roaming aimlessly around the countryside. You know, a lot of guys don't believe this, but th this is near the Swiss border. So they look still snow-covered grounds. That these guys were aimlessly wandering the countryside. I said, gee, what is this? We, we never heard of uh, concentration camp. Then we saw several guys shred either a dead horse or a dead cow and just eating the raw flesh. And as you know, if you're uh, starving with malnutrition, if you eat something solid, you're just going to collapse. So that's what they did. You know, they eat this and they collapse. And of course, at that time, we're not privy to the fact that there was a concentration camp not um, close by and all that kind of stuff. But later on, some of, some of us would jump out of the truck. And I think as we were just resting along the uh, road, would uh, talk to some of these guys. And <clears throat> very fortunately, some of these prisoners could speak uh, English. And they said that they were, uh, most of them were Lithuanian Jews. And they were in Dachau. Some of them were what they call political prisoners. I didn't know what that meant. But anyway, they were in Dachau, the concentration camp. I'm not sure. I don't know whether we had a direct order or not, but some of these guys are saying that that there were direct orders given us that we should not uh, offer them any solace. No water, no food, no medicine, or whatever it is, but we did that anyway. You, you know, as compassionate individuals, everywhere and anywhere would have done it. You see somebody suffering like that, you, what you gonna do? Just see them suffer? So some of these guys even gave them uh, extra blankets. So that night, after we uh, stopped, some of us entered the camps. And let me tell you that the stench, the stench was so terrible. After, I don't know, one or two minutes, stench of feces, urine, the acrid smoke of burning flesh, I, I mean, indescribable, unbelievable. I couldn't stand it much longer, so I went out retching after you know, a minute, two maybe. But the amazing thing is some of these guys with stronger constitution leisurely roamed around the compound. And you know what they found? They found huge ovens, still warm. And next to the huge ovens, they saw lots of 50-gallon drums filled with ashes. Now, nobody's saying these are human ashes because we don't know, but you can only surmise. In the concentration camp, indescribable, indescribable. And the, you think to yourself, gee, how can a human being be so inhumane to somebody, another human being? But I have to say I bear witness because I saw that. I was there.